60 miles north of Luxor, on the west bank of the Nile, is a town called Dendera. And it is here, in December of 1798, that Napoleon's troops stumbled upon a temple buried in sand. The men, stopping for a rest, admired the ornate top of a once great temple. But a curious artist by the name of Dominique Vivant Denon jumped off his horse with a sketch pad and fumbled his way through the submerged gates. His curiosity led to one of the greatest discoveries. What he and the troops had stumbled upon was the Temple of Hathor at Dendera, and more importantly, a depiction of a zodiac. Could the beauty of this temple hide within its walls the brains behind the workings in the universe and the timeline of humanity? When Napoleon's savants reached Dendara, they went inside and under the leadership of a man named uh, Denon, they went into the upper chambers and there was a very dark, small chapel. And when Denon looked up with his torch, he saw that on the ceiling was this astronomical depiction of the sky in circular form and it's become known as the Dendara Zodiac and around this in symbolic form is the 12 signs of the Zodiac along with various other constellations uh, and then other figures beyond this in a circle representing the 36 so-called deacons these are the gods and goddesses who would have represented each one 10 days of the year, creating 360 in all. This discovery sparked the interest of archaeologists all over the world. At the time, no one was able to translate hieroglyphs, and this zodiac was hope that finally they would have a date of when ancient Egypt was built. However, the mystery of this great temple kept unraveling. When the Dendera Zodiac first emerged in Paris, it caused an absolute sensation because it seemed to the scholars originally that it pushed back the dating of human civilization tens of thousands of years. And it introduced the dreaded A word into the conversation about ancient Egypt. And the A word, of course, is Atlantis because the scholars are looking at this and saying, this zodiac talks about civilization going back tens of thousands of years. There is no civilization tens of thousands of years ago, except Atlantis. And so still that's a perspective that is held by many that in fact, the Dendera zodiac was there to specifically tell us that there have been previous human civilizations on earth going back many thousands of years. The Zodiac is believed to depict ancient astrology and time periods from as far back as 14,000 years ago. Freddy Silva points out that there is actually another unique date depicted in its constructs, and this marks the original building of the temple before the most recent version. It had been there for so long, it had been rebuilt, rebuilt, and added to over time, and it's a miraculous what the Greeks did to rebuild the temple. And a lot of people will say, this is a Greek temple. Well, it's not. The Greeks rebuilt what was really there and they restored it to what we see today. And one of the most incredible finds was that they discovered there was there's a, a complete obsession with the sky. And that tells you everything you need to know about the origins. And if you look very closely, and if you follow the constellations, because they're all marked on there, each one of them behaves like an ever-decreasing spiral, not a circle. It's a spiral that goes to the center, and there's a, 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 the center is marked by a big calf. And if you happen to look at where the calf's leg points to, the first constellation 
in that zodiac is the constellation of Cancer, the crab. And that tells you about the origins because the constellation of the crab puts us now in the time period of about 8,000 BC, which just happens to be the time period when agriculture and civilization mysteriously appears in Egypt the first time. Which also happens to coincide with the time period when the followers of Horus, the shining ones, appear after the flood along the Nile rebuilding the temples and adding their information to the temples. And I suspect that Dendera was one of those sites. If Dendera was an ancient site depicting astrologically the existence of humans on Earth, is it possible this temple also connects its origins to the stars? Mythology has it there wasn't just one Hathor, there were seven. The myth of seven goddesses, however, is not just connected to this temple. It has its origins all over the world. Could it be that these female deities that the temple was named after were otherworldly in nature? According to Egyptian archaeologist Abdelrahman A. Amin, in his book titled Dendera, Land of the Goddess Hathor, he concludes from several studies that the temple is on an azimuth of 18 degrees negative 7, which aligns its structure to the Ursa Major stars. This is an unusual alignment for a temple in Egypt. But Anton Parks explains that this star system, known as the Great Bear, is connected to a lineage of divine females that came to Earth thousands of years ago. He connects their lineage back to the Sumerian god Enki, or as he calls him, Sa'am, and the goddess named Namu. At this point in the story, Namu and Sam leave the Great Bear, the Great Bear constellation, to go to the Pleiades in order to execute what was planned by the Marduku. They must create a large quantity of Amashutum, of Amashutum priestesses who will help them in their work. They will create 82 Amashutum to work with the land and plantations for one part, and with the small cattle on the other part. Their role in the story is significant because they have great powers. They are allowed to clone under certain conditions. They are scattered throughout the universe. They are on Earth, but they are also in the Great Bear, the Pleiades, in quite a few places in the universe. If this is true, could this temple be aligned to Ursa Major to point to the origins of the goddesses? Many ancient cultures have a similar mythology of seven goddesses that come from the Pleiades. Maybe this connection comes full circle here in Dendera, a reminder that their origins stretch from one star system to the next. Over many years, I've collected a lot of artifacts. And on these ancient artifacts, the majority of them depict something called the Seven Sisters. It's pretty interesting that when you go into ancient texts, you discover that a lot of these civilizations supposedly started in the Pleiadian star system, which is where you have the Seven Sisters. It's been mentioned in Homer's Iliad, it's been mentioned in the Bible, many other texts as well. But what's interesting is the Aboriginal people of Australia also say that they were the first people seated on this planet by the Pleiadians. So this Ursa Major plays a very, very major role at the Temple of Dendera, and also maybe even seeding human beings on this planet. The mission of the Seven Hathors is to bring a consciousness level to the people. So in our world, there are seven women or seven goddesses or seven deities that represent Pleiades. And the Pleiadians are instrumental in helping create various civilizations around the world. They have always helped Earth coming here and creating new civilizations, cross-pollinating with people and helping other demigods to create a new phase of humanity. The seven women or seven goddesses, the seven Hathors, are represented around the world in various religions and cultures. The sistrum was used in ceremony to actually activate 
through sound, the vibration of Pleiades. This is a very important instrument that the Hathors were in charge of. And they all played the sistrum to bring about the vibration of their, their home, Pleiades. This otherworldly vibration seems to have an effect even today as people walk through the great hypostyle hall. Was it possibly built to hold the frequency of these otherworldly beings in hopes they would be able to help humanity? Anton Parks believes a machine used to travel interdimensionally happens to reside in another dimension of existence in the temple itself. This, in turn, gives off its strange frequency. According to my understanding of this story, this is the place where the Zeta machine would be. This is the well-known counter-rotating machine on the site of Dendera. I have visited Dendera several times. There are several areas that are quite particular in Dendera. When visiting the site, we can feel that there are some electromagnetic areas where you have the feeling your legs are falling down, where you feel really tired, a headache. Near the Dendera temple is the house of the phoenix. And I think the Zeta machine is located right there. When you go inside, right away, you come into this area where there's two gigantic granite slabs that are magnetized. So when I took out my camera to videotape this, I saw the magnetism interfering with my camera. There's a specific frequency interacting with the magnetism there that gives you this kind of a buzz that you can feel when you're walking through. If this is true, what kind of frequency could be harnessed in this temple? Hathor represented our relationship to sound, perhaps more specifically to vibration, because there are some vibrations that are important to us that cannot be heard. And it was in this place that we see Hathor actually applying the technology of vibration in the earthly realm uh, to healing as well as to security and defense. We see Hathor holding back the, the beings that are coming at her in force, that want to hurt her, holding back with, with a force. We see her healing uh, the, the body of those that are brought to her using the power of vibration, not necessarily sound, but vibration. So Hathor now is, is associated uh, very, very closely with this technology of, of sound, of vibration, and our relationship to sound and vibration in our lives relationships that are only now being revealed through the best science of the modern world. If this mysterious temple has been encoded with not only the history of our human existence, but a frequency generated by an otherworldly source, is it possible to decode this power? Is such a sophisticated, subtle, technologically advanced understanding of our relationship to the world, it transcends this polarity between male and female. They had gone beyond those differences.